I want to bring God's word, then we will continue with other details later. We have been asking ourselves questions from the life of uh, uh, Joseph. Because these are real issues, real life that we ask ourselves. And today we are asking the question, are you willing to wait for God? Willing to wait for who? For God. Waiting for God. Waiting for God. The whole of that chapter, there are a few things that we are going to get out of and our lives also will never be the same because we are learning what Joseph has gone through. The first question we ask ourselves was, what is your purpose? In other words, do you know why you are born? And I say that some of you will take too long before we discover why we were born, but we will still discover. But some of us already know that some of you are here. God has given you resources so that you can bless others. You know it. So, unahea hea, ukijaribu kusaidia watu. Because you know that is your, 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 your purpose. That whatever God has brought your way so that you can bless others. Some of us know our purpose. We serve others and we have no, we, 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 we serve others and it's like we have no feeling even when these others don't appreciate us. Because we know our purpose and we are doing it as unto the Lord. So that was purpose. Then we looked at, do you know who you are? Identity. Do you know who you are? Uh, a few years ago, Kenya Power was making a lot of losses. But the losses they were making was not losses. Actually, to a, uh, groups of people that were keeping their money. That was when my wife was working there as in one of those customer service things and so on. I can't remember what it was. But one time she comes home and she tells me, we have new people. They had brought Canadians who are Asians, Indians, who are Canadians to come and help them. Help them get, get uh, their money from government and parastatos and so on. And they, they were taught by these people to be Kenya power. You are nothing else, you are Kenya power. You are not, you are not KBC. You are not uh, uh, Kemfrey. You are not, uh, you are not CID. You are Kenya Power. Kenya Power. It's like, repeat Kenya Power, repeat Kenya Power. Why they were told so is because people would go and come back without the checks and explain that uh, uh, tulienda huko, tukaangalia hiyo institution, tuka, tukaona wanajaribu sana. And this Asian will remind them, Sio kujaribu, we ujue we ni Kenya power, kujaribu si kwako. Usiende kujaribu. No, you are a Kenya power. And for a little while, they collected money until she would come home beaming with the joy that I got all these mini chicks, I got this. Because when she discovered she was Kenya power, she became Kenya power. When you know who you are, that's what I was saying last time. When you identify yourself, nobody can mess you. When you know you are a Christian, when you know you are born again, when you know your relationship with the Lord, when you know who you are, then there is nothing that can bring you down because you resist it. Like Joseph said, Joseph never said, I'm not going to lie with you, Potiphar's wife, because of only one reason. But she said, no, I don't want to sin against God. Because Joseph knew who he was. And today we want to ask ourselves, are you willing to wait for God? In this chapter, Joseph is waiting. Because there is nothing else to do. Do you know you can get to a place, there is nothing you can do? When you get to that level, all what you need to do is to wait. And waiting is not passive. You don't wait in there. You know, you don't. You know, I was telling some people in 1977, we believed that Jesus was going to come back for his church in July, the seventh day of July, the seventh hour of July, the seventh minute of July, the seventh second of July. Which meant anybody that was in school. And you are, you are going to form four. You gave up. Because why study? In heaven, we are not looking for A's. 
So anybody that was in form 5, form 6, they just relaxed. They were waiting for the Lord. But you know, July came. He didn't come. So they all panicked to try to catch up, but it was too late. So a lot of Christians did not do well in 1977. And the reason is, they were waiting for Jesus to come. But we thank God for India. India is very good. Most of my, of my Christian friends who are waiting for the Lord then went to India to catch up with their university grades and so on. Because they waited passively doing nothing. But when you are waiting, waiting is actually getting out of the way. Tell your neighbor, getting out of the way. Waiting is getting out of the way so that God can have his own way. So when God says wait, he is not telling you to, start, to stand there. No, he's telling you, get out, let me perform it for you. So as I wait, I'm just giving the Lord the leeway so that he can do that which I cannot do. Because there are things that you cannot do. It's only God who can do it. So Joseph, where he is, you know the biggest problem of some of you and the way you look at me is because you know the story. Bishop, tunajua Joseph, atakuwa prime minister. But it's because you have read. But I want you to put yourself in Joseph's life. When he went to prison, he had no idea. He did not know what was going to happen. When he was thrown in the pit, he had no idea. He did not know what was going to happen. When he was, he, he was in Potiphar's, he, did not, he had no idea. He thought he would live that way. So the situation we find Joseph, he is in prison. He has no idea what will happen. He, he thought he would rot there. Or maybe nothing is going to happen. No deliverance will happen. So that is where we are. And I want you to go with me. He can't get out of prison. He can't appeal his sentence. He suddenly can't escape. He is stuck in an Egyptian prison. Far from the people who love him. Far from the people that knew him. Even his father thought he was dead. He is there. He is accused. But you know Joseph was wise. And I pray that we can have this wisdom. Because of that situation when nobody else thinks about you, you can release, you can wait by giving God the way. You know, Nikwachia Buana, a song So when Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers, he had no idea what will happen. He did not know what was going to be next. He knew, just like you and I don't know about our future. Do we know about our future? Do you know about your tomorrow? You know, there are things that if I knew, that I'll go through them, maybe I would have waited. You know, for example, some of you, labda umeitu wa jinga maratatu, mwezi huu, na you are boss. Lakini ukasmile kwa sababu, next week. Now, because you are waiting for something, that's what I meant. You are waiting for something, you don't care what they are calling you. Why? I have some Saturdays to come. So because you know there is Saturday, you can wait. But I'm saying when you don't know there is nothing, you can't wait. It, you need God to help you to wait. God needs to help us to wait. But waiting is not passive, it's active, but it's allowing God to have his own, his own way. So when Joseph is stuck in prison, he has no inside knowledge regarding how long and, and when and if he will ever get out. He certainly knows nothing. And some of us are in those situations where you don't know when you'll be healed. You don't know when God is going to perform that miracle that Bishop keeps on telling you he is coming. You don't know when you go to Maju that Bishop keeps on telling you Utaenda. You, you have no, you know, oh, Bishop has kept saying I'll get married and I'm still waiting, you know, and so on. You don't know when it will happen. But you know what? I, there is a statement of one person in this church who said, I'll keep on talking about Jesus until I'll believe him. I'll talk about him until I believe he's able. Say about his power until I believe he can do it to me. I will not shy out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he waits. He waits. He waits. You know, if he knew, oh, 
Joseph, hang around, you're going to be the prime minister. He would have agreed to serve anything. Hata ikidore ukitaku kata kata. Mimi takuwa prime minister. Kata ya mugu, ni ni wewe. Na nikiwa prime minister utaniona. You know that kind of a setup? But this guy does not know what is going to happen. He is there, just like you and I. We don't know tomorrow. Now, I'm trying to mess your theology a little bit. Because you have a problem already. You know Joseph is a prime minister. But can't you put yourself in his shoe when he had no idea? I had no idea that I would become a pastor one day. If I knew I was going to be a pastor of a beautiful church like this, I would have sacrificed everything. But I didn't. Kwa hivyo ni meitu wa mambo migine, ni kabio kanisa ni agoma, huku, sijui ya. But I did not know. I was just, oh God, have mercy. But today people respect us, they own us. Actually, before they sell land around us, they come to consult us. Ah, hiyo inaniweka kaka juu sana. But there was a time, nobody would associate with us. Ya, ni kare kakadisa kakemani, wacha, huyo jamaa. But today, thank God we waited. But it was not revealed. You know, when I, when I was driving a, v, a VW, KRW 672, I never knew I would drive a Mercedes. Can you imagine? If I knew, I would have persevered. But I was complaining and struggling and nakanakosa migu, nashindua. Indio niliitiwa. So there are things that you and I we, do, we have no idea but if God has said it it is still kept secret I will keep on waiting I will wait because it doesn't matter how long I will keep on waiting because I know God is faithful there are some people who get married that when they are 60 something no, you see and some of you wonder 60 something yeah they get married at 60 something yeah deal deal <laughs> Oh, there are people who get children at 90. Dio. Dio. Some of you sometimes you look at me and I wonder, are these people understanding what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me give you a story. When the last sister to my wife got married, we were courting. When she was born, we were courting. But the mother did not know she was expectant because she had given alikuwa mezawa kutosha. Si akaenda hospitali akasema kuna kitu anasikia tumbo ni kama. Seriously. Then we were all called to go and see her. We were quoting, we were just about to get married. So here we go to Kenyatta Hospital. And then we are wondering why, what is she doing in maternity? <laughs> so we go with my wife and our natural dad yake anastuka anatoka anapigiwa simu na ndugu zake hawaambii kitu anaambia and then mkajione <laughs> what i'm trying to say kuna watu wataambiwa and then mkajione even sara you know sara says who would have known that i can do this they will laugh. They will laugh with me. No wonder Isaac was called laughter. May God cause some people to laugh with you because you are waiting on God. Not necessarily for children, but for whatever you are waiting. May God surprise you in the name of the Lord. Yesterday I received a call from a man. He's a friend of mine, a preacher. And he was so excited. He's so excited because he met me when I was not a reverend. He prophesied. Where were reverend? You know, it happened. He came and celebrated with me. Then I don't know, I looked like a bishop. He started calling a bishop. And he would come to my office and pray. Where were the bishop? You know, I... Do I look like a bishop? Maybe now because you know, I do. But then I didn't. That's a problem. When you know Joseph became a prime minister, where he is right now, you have a problem. So, and then, when I became a bishop, one of the things he wanted me to do for him is to go with him to the U.S. Take him to the U.S. He kept on saying, Bishop, ni bebe a briefcase. And I tried a couple of times. 
but I did not succeed. But yesterday he called me, and he was laughing. He was so happy. Bishop, and he's almost 80. Bishop, know what? I was in Boston for a whole month. I said, what? Yes, for a whole month. What were you doing? I was enjoying myself there, Bishop. The daughter of the monaga. I was really enjoying myself. In my heart, I said, yes. After waiting upon the Lord, I think when he went for his visa and everything, they looked at the head and wondered, Museo Amiakayo, senior citizen, senior. And I was a new visa. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying, may people, may that which you have desired for long, may it come to pass. My prayer is, may it come quicker so that you can enjoy it when you are young. But even if it doesn't come, keep on waiting. Because waiting is not passive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want to sum up the whole of that chapter, you can say, Joseph is in jail. There are two men in jail forgetting about everybody else and two men dreaming forget about everybody else two interpretation for two men forget about everything else one lives and one dies and then one man forgets joseph that is the summary of chapter 40 but three things that are critical for us as we wait tell your neighbor three things and those are the things that i want to bring to you and then i'll be out of your way because waiting is the hardest discipline of Christian life. Because most of us here, we hate to wait. Can I, can I amuse you? Can I get a mic? This week you waited for something. Now utatuambia. Sasa fikiria ndiyo nini. What did you wait for this week? Start yourself, Pastor. <laughs> we, we have been waiting to have a, a manager where I work. And finally, last week on Thursday, we got one. Come on! Waiting for a manager. And you know, as I waited for a manager myself, I was praying for her to be promoted to that place. I'm not changing. Amen! Uh, I was waiting for my mother-in-law to, to get well. She's uh, bedridden in the hospital. So you are waiting even now. And uh, right now she's... Perfect. She's, Perfect. She's doing well. Wow. So we thank to God. To God be the glory. Oh, amen, I told amen. you. So some of you are helping him to give the glory to God. Eunice, what were you waiting? Mm, like I said, I was waiting for my mom to get well. She's well, although she's not yet out of hospital. Right. I'm still waiting. And I was waiting for some money. But he has not yet come back. You are still waiting. Yes. Keep on waiting. I'll tell you how to wait. I was waiting for a client's response. I've waited for like three months, and on Thursday he confirmed that he confirmed. Whoa! That's why we were praising God for you are waiting. We've been waiting for a court injunction concerning our land, and we are still waiting up to now. You're still waiting, yes. man. Our prayer today for guys that are waiting. How many people are waiting for something? We'll pray for you, but I'll tell you what you need to do as you wait. Rachel, At, we can't miss you. It was a whole line. Uh, I've been waiting for my son to make a decision in his college, and I'm still waiting. Keep on, man, this church is full of people that are waiting. Okay. I've been waiting for my dad to be operated because he's 90 years, and the doctors were saying they won't operate him. But on Saturday, there's a doctor who came over from Nairobi. And it operated him and is very fine now. Yeah. Wonderful. You waited, the doctor came. Sasa hawe gine wed you are mwisho. Nilitaka pale, lakini ni sao meinuka upese sana. Nini we gine, we spare you. Praise God. There are some dividends I've been waiting for from somewhere I'd invested for a long time. I didn't. And on that day, I got the money. How many people waited for a matatu? 
How many people waited for a doctor? You are waiting for, to see a doctor? How many people are waiting for easy coach to come and pick you from one place to another? You see, we, we wait. Actually, we wait. Even waiting for the saloonist to, you, to, for you to be next. And some of you never said that. Do you wait? And as you wait, how do you wait? Because waiting is not easy. Is that one of the hardest discipline of a Christian walk? So how do you wait? Because waiting is going to be there, but how do you wait? And we are going to see what Joseph said, but before I go to Joseph, remember, thank you. Remember I shared a little earlier here, three ways of waiting. Now some of you have forgotten, and thank God, it's okay. I can remind you what I said. I said, when you wait, you wait with expectation. Those guys are waiting with expectation that something is going to happen. Others have already received, but they are still waiting. Because waiting, we keep on waiting. We spend more hours in a day waiting. Those that are living in their own homes, yani iko na shower pale, kama mukowengi, even waiting for the shower to be free. Eh, hey, shower to be free. You keep on peeping until the shower is free. Now, if you are living in those days when, when, <laughs> when Bedisita was Bedisita, tell your neighbor when Bedisita was Bedisita, <laughs> there would be a toilet at the corner and a bathroom at the corner. Amen? And people would queue with their towels. Na towel uza. Kwa sabu unaeza rukwa. Munaenda mukisonga tu. That is a demonstration of when <laughs> when <laughs> bedsitter was bedsitter. Nowadays bedsitter is on a chona, whatever. So you, you are in a self-contained some place. So as you wait, you wait with expectation I taught you then. And then I also told you then as you wait you wait with grace, gracefully. That's what I told you. I'm just reminding what I had told you earlier. You wait gracefully. Unajua, a lot of us when we are waiting, everybody knows we are waiting. We want to shout to everyone. Nimegoja, now you mungu wata akujagi. Nirimugoja, karibu ni give up. You know those kind of talk. But when you wait gracefully, you are still expecting and you have grace. It is like you are there waiting upon God. You are giving God the way. And finally, I also taught those days that you wait patiently. But for Joseph, three other things that I want to add on to you. Number one, be faithful as you wait. Just be faithful as you wait. The Bible tells us, Genesis chapter 40 verse 1 to 4, the Bible says this. Sometime after this. What we are not told is how long was there after this, or sometimes later. Because it simply says, Joseph, where he was working, he worked until he became the boss of other prisoners. You cannot be a, a boss of a prisoner by being there the first day. So he must have worked there for some time, maybe for a couple of years, until they, show, they, they looked at him, they knew whatever you give him succeeds. The cup bearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against their master, the king of Egypt. Verse number two. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cup bearer and the chief baker. Verse three. And he put them in the custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. Verse four. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph and he attended them after they had been in custody for some time. Now you continue verse 5 and so, and so on. Verse 1 to 4 it is trying to tell us that Joseph was so faithful that he was even given a position. 
He was so faithful. He was not, he never kept on lamenting why he was there unjustly. He never lamented why the people who trusted him, who, who, uh, who, who he thought who, who or he could trust, turned against him, those were his brothers. He did not blame the days that he was born. He never cast the day he was born because of his dreams getting into ashes. He was faithful. He was thrown where he was thrown and he was faithful. Even though all those things were true for Joseph, he remained faithful to God and to his duties. Somewhere, as I was reading and preparing this, there is this quote that came, and you can write it if you, if you want. The secret of your future is found in your daily routine. Tell your neighbor that. The secret of your future is found in your daily routine. Now ask them, what is your daily routine? And please don't be shy, tell them. Mi na ushaka guo. Mimi ni mwalimu. Mi na uzaka mboga. Mimi ni mtu wa biashara. Mimi ni mwanafunzi. The secret of your future, that future that you have no idea about, actually it is pegged, it is around what you do daily. The things you do every day, especially the little things that make up the routine of your life, those are the seeds that you plant for your future, that you sow every day. And that takes us to a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10, which says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Little things that I do, that becomes my future. Elizabeth Elliot has written, and in one of her books, has talked about what to do when you hit a wall. She says this, when you feel stuck, when that happens, she advises, people to not just get up and do the next thing. You know, you just get up and do the next thing. The advice she gives people is that don't just wait just like that wake up and do the next thing there is always a next thing that needs to be done the duties that i do the little things that i do my future somehow is pegged around there not only that as i do it i need to know that when i hit the wall there is always a next thing to do for example, at three, unaangalia usingizi, haipatikani. Do the next thing. Wake up and pray. Read the Bible. There is always a next thing for you to do. Mumezozana na buwana. Muache hapo, enda uoshe viombo. Ama we buwana, toka upige maround. Amen? Ata ukiwabiwa, gweraga na doigu, waga just walk out. Please. Don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. You know, when you stand there, you start arguing. So do the next. Oh, tell your neighbor, do the next thing. Well, if you are selling bananas and they're not buying, do the next thing. Sell mangoes, why not? If you are selling shirts and they're not being bought, sell, do something. Do the next thing. That's what Elizabeth Elliot said. There is always something that you can do. Do that next thing that you can do. It may be small, trivial, but there is always something that needs to be done. Washing or cleaning or writing a note or making a phone call or going to or walking out. You know, the other day I was so amused. I was having a lot of pain at the back. And uh, many doctors said many things. And you know, kuna madaktari na madaktari, eh? Sawa. Nikaenda kwa mmoja hapa kasarani. Sio daktari kabisa lakini daktari. Hao ni wale wanakuangaliaga miguu akikuweka hivi anakuambia unaona mmoja ni mfupi. Anakugonga mahali pap zinakuja level. Fesio. Na labda yuko chachi. Wewe ni jamaa mpoa sana. Ni rafiki yangu labda yuko anakuja ga chachi hapa. Nilipoenda alipo nimaliza hiyo shughuli. <laughs> Akaniambia, 
Shida yako ingine na wakaniandikia dawa. Shida yangine yako ni kwa sababu ya dagi mbigu. When is the last time you walked for a kilometer? So, I was dropped. I was to call Kibera to come and pick me. I decided I will not. Na hili nisaidia. Kuoku kutoka kasarani huko. Kufika hapa. Eee. Hey. Kale kauchungu, kumbe kanataka tu ukayo unakakanyanga tu. Unakakanyanga tu. Unakakanyanga tu. Do the next thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you hit the wall, there is the next thing that you can do. Do the next thing. Clean the shelves. Do something. Don't stay idle in your house. Because waiting is not just do something. <laughs> Listen to this. If you are sweeping, because you decide to sweep, sweep like Michelangelo. How he painted. Because he, his paints were so famous. So as you sweep, sweep like him. Amen. Martin Luther says this. Martin Luther Jr. puts it this way. Whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn, when they come, they cannot beat you up. They will find you have already a memorial. Already it is written. Dead at Kimathi. It's nothing you can do. You know if they ne never put dead at Kimathi, somebody would say, Ni mimi ni ripigania uhuru. See, dear? But there. I, 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 I was opposed to having our notes with a picture of anybody. Myself. I was so opposed. But when they put Kenyatta Conference Center with a statue there, I said, that's right. Because that kama pesa yetu haigia kuwa na kitu, utaichua na nini. Inataka kakitu about kakwa na kahistory. Yeah. Sio kira president, kira president, kira president. Hata Tanzania wameweka nyerere. Mahali. Kwa thani vizuri huyo muzea kumbuka? Kumbuka kwe. Lakini siku taka uhuru awekwe pale, atikibake awekwe pale, atinani raira, amoi awekwe, paraira atana ya atakuja siku yake awekwe pale, na mudava dida atakuja awekwe yake, panakalonzo, manoti itakuwa imechanganyika. Hata Amerika waliweka ya kutosha zaza wawekagi wegine. Those guys ni wale walikuwa kitambo. So Martin Luther King Jr. puts it that way. What, what you do, do it so well. If you, are, if you are sweeping, sweep well. If you do it so well, like sex, uh, Shakespeare who wrote poetry. You do it so well, like Beethoven who composed music. You do it so well. So if you are cleaning, clean so well. Now, that point then brings us to what Joseph was doing in prison. He did it so well. Because even in prison, tell your neighbor, they are promotion also. There is no situation that you can find where you cannot be promoted. When others are still waiting for Ugari, and when you serve. Now, when you serve Mandizi, you kwa prison, you will serve one. serve Nyama, you will serve two. When you hakuna wendi utakula yani. Joseph amekuwa promoted. Why? He was so faithful that even the jailer knew if people come from the king, the only person who can take care of them is Joseph's battalion. A slave. But because what he did, he did it so well. Ask your neighbor, what do you do? Do you do well? Do you do well? But we are still saying Joseph did not know he was going to be a prime minister. He only knew I'm going to be a prisoner and I will do well. In other words, I'm saying this. Because I don't know whether I'm going to be the prime minister of Kenya or the president or the headmaster. As a teacher, I'm going to teach well. Because I don't know whether I'll be the general manager or the departmental manager or the operation manager in a bank. I'm going to do what I do and I will do it well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
if I'm serving little children, I'm going to do well. That will be my part. I don't know for how long, I don't know what is going to happen, but I will do well. When you do well, then God is going to bless you in that situation. Just do well. I know some of us say, no, the corruption is too much. Leave it alone, do well. Where is Kubari who are corrupted? Let me sharpen that a little, what I'm saying. I'm saying this. He did not know what was going to happen. But the point is, I should say, it was impossible for him to know what was going to happen. Just like it is impossible for you to know what is going to happen. You know, there are people in this country that we thought they would never drive. So, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, don't write me out because I'm waiting. <laughs> in 1985, in, my, in that blue Volkswagen of mine, there were two vehicles in the church, my Volkswagen and another Toyota, two. The Toyota was newer. I had a member that every three years he got a new one. Well, I'm still struggling with an old one. So the wife of this man comes to me and he says, Pastor, do you want to go to the house? Mine. So I called the husband and said, why can't you allow? He said, no. So I allowed the wife to to reverse. Every time I go to the US and she is carrying me with those Mwondoros, I remember my Volkswagen when I gave her to reverse because she would not have touched the husband's car. Kuna wanaume hapa okokeni. Okokeni tu. Don't write me off. The Lord is not finished with me yet. Number two. So be faithful. He was so faithful. He was promoted. He was in charge of those cup bearer and the baker. The second one for Joseph is that he was ready all the time. Ready all the time. Be ready. Be ready to solve the problems of others. Be ready. You are in a bad situation, but just be ready. The Bible tells us verse 5 to 8. And one night they both dreamt. These guys dreamt. The car bearer and the baker of the king of Egypt. They were confined in the prison. Each his own dream. And each dream with its own interpretation. In other words, Joseph was there with them. And this guy dreamt. And you know, sometimes when I'm confined, there are things that happen. There are people that when they are confined, things happen. Like uh, John Bunyan. When he was in prison, when he came out. He wrote a book that is called Pregrin's Progress. Dietrich Bonhoeffer goes to prison and when he comes out, he writes a book, a very powerful book, The Cost of Discipleship. Chuck Carlson is put in prison. When he comes out, he starts a very powerful worldwide ministry that is called Prisons Fellowship. May God cause your situation might be as tough as it is that God will bring a ministry out of it. You will be ready. You will be ready to help others. And Joseph is an example. He was ready. Because the prison doors can never keep him out. He was through with the Lord. He knew God was going to answer him. He was faithful. And the final thing because of time, be bold. Be bold. So when you read Genesis 40, you discover that Joseph tells the Kabera that he will be released in three days and restored to his former days or former position, verse 12 and 13. But this guy was so delighted, but Joseph adds verse number 14. Remember me. I mean, Buana. I have done this for, for you, remember me. But let me tell you, when God is working and he wants himself to receive all the glory, they will forget you. 
they will forget you have you ever met somebody who says that you any actually and you are trying to tell them situli soma na wewe si si tulikuwa tukufanya kazi pamoja na wewe si mimi ndio nilikuwa boss wako atini wewe ni nani what they are trying to tell you is that walimalizana na wewe sasa wewe hauna kitu when you had it you know or you call someone anachukua anaku anakuambia hivi ni nani sikusikii kuna kelele you know one of the lies that people have is to lie at kuna kelele usiki na unasikia tu lakini unapiga kelele i will call you lakini you are trying to say i will not call you may god save us be bold Joseph was bold enough he told these guys remember me but he never remembered him he didn't what do you do while you are waiting be faithful be ready be bold but there is a danger in some of us what if the biggest problem with us is what if mwambie jirani yako what if it's like god it's it's like you receive from god that god will bless me one day i will do this and then you start saying what if what if i die before what if what if my son comes home broken what if what if my mother comes home dead what if you know you are praying for healing that is only your part did you know let me tell you and shock you we don't pray for people not to die because death is an appointment what we pray for is for people to get healed akipita hapo tunamwachia mwenyewe sio lakini you cannot get you cannot entangle yourself with what if at what if what if i will never get married so be it Kwani, will you be the first? What if we never have children? Will, that, will you be the last or the first? So I will not go in the what if. I will have no what if. I will believe what God has promised can come to pass. It doesn't matter how old I am. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. So verse 23 gives us the end of the story. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph but forgot him. You see, so when we say what if, it brings us very far from what God is doing. And Joseph could have said, what if the cupbearer never remembers me? I will stay here forever. What if I die in prison? What if I never get to clear my name? I might die here and they have judged me wrongly. What if life will kill me what if i lose my job what if he never asked me out for a second time what if i never get married what if i can't have children what if things don't work out what if i run out of money what if my husband makes a bad decision what if i lose my job what if my children get sick what if we can't find a place to live what if I the contract that i'm seeking fails not to go through what if i don't get accepted in the college that i want what if she files a divorce or he files a divorce what if deliverance church kasarani splits what if what if so you're not a negative son may god help us that when i wait i will not have what if please forgive me to use this statement gone kana gone it's a very powerful kikuyu saying gone kana gone it's all, it sounds almost like greek if we can twang it a little ngone kana ngone <laughs> see believe us we believe i will go to see to see I'm not going to see not to see I'm going to see to see ngone kana ngone 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 Yeah wale ambao si wa kikuyu ubebe hiyo jina wewe nimekuja ngone kana ngone yani I've come to see to see You are not understanding what I'm saying let me try to explain a little A lady not from this church but a friend of mine goes to do driving test hapa hapa save When she was given the car to drive alipogurumisha ikazimika mara ya kwanza hako pale anabaika ikazimika inspector akamwambia mama unataka kwenda kujifundisha zaidi this lady told her hapana ni wewe uelewi hapa nilikuja kuchukua driving lessons <laughs> all right 
Haya akisha tena akahakisha ikaenda ikazimika kabla haijafika kwa kwa, kwa, kwa mlango. The officer akamwambia mama si unaona hata, hata ukiangalia si unaona umeshindwa akamwambia ni wewe uelewi hapa nilikuja kuchukua driving license. Askari naye akawa unajua kuna askari wakati roho anatembea roho akitembea askari hata naye anaweza kuwa cool. Akasema haya mama twende. Walipoingia kwa barabara gari ikaenda. Hiyo panic miguu inagonga na gongana ilikuwa ni panic tu but she knew why she was gone she had gone there so, walipoingia dhika highway miguu ikawa sawa akaendesha gari akarudi akapewa driving akatupigia ni hairuo <laughs> now then we ask really they failed me they had failed me five times they gave you yes tell us what happened she said me i failed three times but i kept on confessing gone kana gone Hallelujah. As we wait upon God, gone kana gone. You know, as we believe God for our healing, gone kana gone. There is nothing like Eve. I want to find that which God has in store for me. Hallelujah. You could be betrayed and slave accused in prison, but never give up. When things happen, be faithful. Because God will lift you up even in that situation. Right? Don't lose up. Just keep on holding to the Lord because he will come strongly to you. I want us to pray. And you know what? Yeah, I saw so many hands of people waiting for something. Whew. If you are waiting for something, please stand. If you are not waiting for something, please sit. Then hold the hand of your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, now that you are waiting, I don't know what you are waiting, but can I plead with you? Be faithful. What was the other word? Tell them what was the other one. Let's do it again. Let's start from where we started. Neighbor, I know you are waiting for something. But as you wait, be, be, be. Oh, let's turn to another one. Neighbor, I know you are waiting for something. But as you wait, be faithful. Be, faithful. Be, ready. Be ready. Be bold. Be bold. We want to lift up our hands as we worship finally. And we want to sing just as I am without one plea and just release yourself. We are saying we are going to have faith in God. We are going to trust in that God who is able to do much more than we even imagine or think in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.